from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. None can be compared to you. How amazing, O Father, are your wonders and your precious love towards us, your children. Father, we can scarcely find words to describe how glorious, majestic you are, yet in all your splendor and all your wonder, you have taken time and the opportunity to bless us, your children. Ah, calling us by name, even keeping counts, the count of the hairs upon our head, declaring, oh God, that before we were in our mother's womb, you knew us. Oh, oh, Father, we bless your name. We honor you. We honor you. Glory be to your name, Lord God. Glory be to your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, this month has been a month when many of you, your children on this line has celebrated are about to celebrate their birthday. Mm. Your faithfulness towards us is immeasurable. Who can understand the riches of your glory, God? Your, your immense love, Father, is far, far beyond understanding. We cannot understand the goodness that you have extended towards us. But oh, how we appreciate you. We appreciate it. Tonight we stop by to say thank you as we worship you, as we worship you, as we worship you, as we worship you, Lord God. Oh, Father, recognizing that even now, even now, even now, oh, before you are angels, Bowing down, Lord God, before you, declaring that you are holy. Yes, yes. You are holy. Mm. There's no one in the world that could be compared to you. Ah, <laughs> you're the God that said, let there be. And it was became, huh, powerful you are, mighty, victorious, victorious, mm, God of victories. We bless your name. We bless your name. Such comfort, oh God, can be felt when we only call on the name of Jesus, knowing that in that name, Lord God, we will find strength. We will find deliverance from all that we are up against, God. Father, if we are bound, oh, that name will set us loose. Oh, so we call the name of Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. As we worship you, as we worship your Father. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, evening and welcome, Brother Henry and Sister Bella, bless you guys. Um, uh, praise God, praise God. Let me start with a short prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come. Not by the works we have done, oh God, but it's by your grace and your grace alone. So we 
enter into your presence, God. We come with thanksgiving upon our lips, Father, on understanding and reckoning that, recognizing that because of your goodness towards us, Father, that every minute of every day, oh God, you are deserving of praise from, from our lips, worship from our hearts. We bless you. We thank you for the opportunity to call upon your great name. Hallelujah. Father, let us never, ever take it for granted because your name is so holy. And it's only through the blood of Jesus Christ that we are able, oh God, to call upon your name to worship and honor you, Father, in this manner. We thank you. We, Father, know it to be, or recognize it to be a privilege. So we bless your name. Be with us tonight. Let thy Holy Spirit commune with us. Let him lead and guide us on our procedures tonight. Our desire is to honor you, O oh God, to glorify your great name. We recognize, Father, that by doing so, we in turn will be tremendously blessed. So guide us tonight, Holy Spirit. Lead us and deliver us into the throne room on our prayers and our worship. We bless you, we praise you, we honor. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Um, if you got your Bibles tonight, um, we'll take a quick look at um, a few verses from um, from John chapter 18, before we get into prayer. John 18. It's the latter part of 18. Uh, we're dealing with, um, John is dealing with um, Jesus' trial. And, uh, you know, it's in the 18 verse also that Peter, oh, God is feeling hurt real bad because what Jesus had told him, or if you want to use the word prophesied to him, became a reality. He, uh, he felt the full weight of embarrassment, I'm sure. But Jesus was on trial. I want to pick up from, from the late, the early 30s, verse I am. Um, I'm going to start reading from like 33, but just before that, I do recognize that when Jesus was brought into Pilate's judgment hall, you know, and um, I realized that looking at the scripture between here and the end of chapters 18, Paul had, no, Pilate had, sorry, Pilate had um, six questions, two to the uh, to the Jews there, to those that were intent in, in doing Jesus harm, and, and, and four to Jesus himself. In fact, in verse 29, Paul, uh, Pilate, I don't know why I keep saying Paul, Pilate, um, let out his first question. He said, 29 said, Pilate then went out unto them and said, what accusation bring he against this man? His first question to the Jews. What accusation? Why did you all bring him here? What is he accused of? What did this man do scriptures tell us that that Jesus was laid led like a lamb to the slaughter, right? So 
He didn't go kicking and screaming, you know? So Pilate, I'm sure laying eyes upon Jesus, must have recognized there right away that this wasn't the posture of most of the people that are, are dragged into his judgment hall. Um, <laughs> these guys answered him, they, they answered and said unto him, if he were not a male, factor we would have we would not have delivered him on to thee um, I wonder what they were saying if he was not a male could it be that because they were so accustomed to stoning females that you know they wouldn't have taken the time to to bring him before bring her before Pilate, they they would have cast their own judgment, execution style, and everything. But because Jesus is a male, they uh, they're now saying that um, you know that's the reason why we're bringing him to you. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. And listen to the Jews' answer to, um, to Pilate's statement, because I find this very interesting, especially, Brother Henry, given what we, we're now reading in the book of, of Acts. You know, the Jews therefore said unto him, it is not lawful for us to put any man to death. Not lawful for us to put any man to, to death. You know, I, I point that out because in, in the book of Acts, we know they soon Stephen. I think they are, uh, you know, didn't they kill um, what's his name? Who was um, with with Peter? Uh, was it uh, Philip? Um, they went after Peter. They they now went after Paul a few times, and in chapter twenty three of of Acts, we found that not only did they want to kill Paul, they took an oath. You know. They, they, they brought a curse unto themselves that if they don't kill him. Can you imagine? Large group decided that, hey, we are bent on killing Paul. He's the same guy. <laughs> but anyway, that's not my the point. You know, I, just, I just wanted to point that out. But um, I, I want to drop down to verse 33, pick up where... Um, Pilate um, is dealing with Jesus. He says, then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, first questions to Jesus, art thou the king of the Jews? 34, Jesus answered him, Says thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? I have noticed that one of the, the brilliant strategy of, of Jesus in dealing with these with the Pharisees is whenever they ask him a question, often he would reply with a question. A brilliant way of answering, you know, brilliant strategy, man. But um, so he answered, he in turn he didn't answer, didn't answer um Pilate. He, he he posed his own question. All right. Pilate fired back. Here comes Pilate's second question in in chapter 35. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? 
thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Yeah, I'm not mistaken. It's so Pilate actually asked Jesus five questions. The first, the second question was, am I a Jew? And the third one was, what hast thou done? Jesus answered in, chapter, in verse 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate with his fifth question, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. I want to underline that because to me that's that's a powerful statement from Jesus. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So the opposite is true also. That if you are not of the truth, you don't believe in, in what is true, then you won't hear his voice. You know? We live in a day and time where, um, where, where um, the question is, is, is posed just like, like Pilate, you know? As Pilate asks, Pilate said unto him, what is true? In this, this day and, and age, we are told that um, truth is, is um, it's no, it's not conclusive. I mean, it's it's, it's what you make. It's relevant to um, to each man's interpretation, which is, in other words, there is no absolute truth. There's no absolute. That's what we're being told today. Pilate asks the question: <laughs> What is truth? That was his. Um, his um, fifth question to Jesus. And when he had said this, he went out again into the, unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Um, part of the reason for me um, selecting this, this, um, part of scripture this evening um, is Jesus talking about his kingdom. My kingdom is not of this world. In, um, in dealing with his disciples, I like the way, you probably hear me say it already, I like the way Miles Monroe, Miles Monroe put it, Dr. Miles Monroe, the late Dr. Miles Monroe, that um, <laughs> The disciples were accustomed to seeing Jesus go away on his own to pray, you know? You know, for, for, for a long time, Jesus didn't take them. He just, he would leave them and go off on his own to pray. But they noticed that when he returned from prayer is when some of the, the greatest acts were performed some of his most powerful acts. So one day, <laughs> in, um, in, in putting it in Miles Monroe translation, the, um, the disciples, you know, who, uh, who by now must have been peeking on Jesus, ask him, 
to, to um, show us how to do that thing that you do, you know, <laughs> that thing that you do when you go away from us, you know, tell us, and how, you know, what are you doing? Show us how to do it, you know? I like the way, I can't do it justice, but the way Miles Monroe put it. But they ask him, Martin Matthew, Matthew 6 tells us that um, they ask him, teach us how to pray. To which Jesus responded, when you pray, um, is that Matthew 6? Yeah. Pray after this manner, Matthew 6, verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Verse 10, thy kingdom come. And I, I wonder if we really understand what Jesus meant when he said, thy kingdom come and thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. I believe in... Um, In Isaiah chapter 9, I believe verse, somewhere around verse 6, I think, as Isaiah prophesies of the, the coming of, of, of Christ. Oh man, what did I read this for? Yeah, chapter 9, Isaiah prophesying of the, the coming of, of Christ hundreds of years before Jesus was born, said in verse 6, 4, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Verse 7, of the increase of his government, and peace there shall be no end unto the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform. Hmm. Establishing a kingdom, ordering it and establish it with judgment and justice forever. Isaiah was, was prophesying, telling of the kingdom of, of God. We don't have enough time this evening, as in, um, in the book of, of, um, of Matthew laid out, Jesus giving parables about the kingdom in, in one chapter, the same chapter with um, that of the uh, the seed. So in Jesus laid out about six, seven, uh, par drop seven parables about the, the, the kingdom in a row. But um, just something from Daniel chapter two, I think it's verse uh, 44 that reads, and in the days, Am I right? Am I right? Chapter two, yes. And in the day of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all those kingdoms and it shall stand forever. I like to put in my translation, all those so-called kingdoms. Because that which we have on earth today, on we, we, we um, describe this kingdom and that kingdom, they all will disappear or, you know, be dissolved. When, uh, when Christ returned, set up his kingdom here on earth. But right now, he's telling Pilate in, back in eight, 
18 of St. John. You know, not yet. Not yet. You said I'm king of the Jews. Y'all saying that. I didn't say that. Y'all said it. You know, because uh, if I was coming in my kingly apparel, I would blow all of you guys away. That, that's my translation right there. Um, you know, blow all of you guys away. Powerful stuff. But um, I just wondered if we really understand what is it that Jesus talked about when he says, let thy kingdom come when we pray. Let thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Because we know that in the kingdom of God, there is provision. You know, everything exists in the kingdom of God. And I know, um, I know, Brother Aaron would would, would attest to this that um, it is our our right as citizens then to um, to 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 um, request of the King our petitions of the kingdom, what we we need, what we desire of the kingdom. If we truly understand what Jesus is saying to us. Amen. Amen. I want to stop right there. Good time is it's after eight already. Let us um let us pray. Let us pray. Let us go in. Let us go in. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus, we honor you, we glorify you, we exalt you. God, we bow before you. We lift up your name on high, O King. Exalt in your name. Hallelujah. 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 As we look forward, Father, to your return. We look forward to your return, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We set up your kingdom here on earth, but help us to understand, even now, help us to learn more, to open up to us, O oh God, the mysteries, as you address the disciples that, you know, the ardent person, you know, was, was never, would never be allowed to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, but you told the disciples that because they had turned their lives around because they have accept, did accept you. They have accepted you. They would have insights of the kingdom of God. So should we, Father, as we call upon your name. Our desire here and now, Lord God, that we be taught by the power of the Holy Ghost that the mysteries of your kingdom, O oh God, will be unveiled to us, that we will gain knowledge and understanding, O oh God, of the workings, the inner workings of your kingdom, Lord God, that we'll be better able to um, conduct ourselves as true believers. Because this is our desire, Father, to be more like Christ. To, to exemplify things of heavenly nature so that men and women who see us, Father, and see our works would glorify your name. There are still mysteries, Father, to, to unlock, even in this present time that we find ourselves in, Father, where there's seemingly chaos on every side because this pandemic has thrown nations worldwide into chaos and even oh god the, the the body of christ struggles to get a grip and to understand clearly what is it that is going on as we reach out to you, as we cry to you, night after night, Father, 
We ourselves desire to know, to hear from you. Not just about what is happening, but what is on your heart. And the things that you would like us to be mindful of even now. But as we reflect on your prayer, O oh God, and the words that you taught your disciples to say when they pray, I'm reminded of the book about the Apostle John. It was written that he prayed that prayer more than five times a day what we refer to as the Our Father prayer, that he would repeat it more than five times daily because he believed in every word that you said. Help us, dear forefather, to start right there by believing on your words, believing every word that proceeded out of your mouth. Maybe that is the beginning of understanding, oh God, how your, set, your kingdom is set up and, the, and the, the fact that, Father, we can always draw from your kingdom. And in a time like this, where there's so much uncertainty, where the body of Christ needs to step forward, oh God, step forward and, 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 and relieve some of the, the, the fear that hangs over the lives of many as a cloud. A moment, oh God, in time when, when we as believers can exhibit a certain degree of confidence and the God that we serve, the king that we serve, and the kingdom that we are a part of. Recognizing, oh God, that this earth as it is put together is not our home. We are a part of a greater kingdom. Yes, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. And though we are, we are affected by the things that exist and goes on in this world, our mind, oh God, and our spirit should be, in a sense, residing in the greater kingdom, in your kingdom. In fact, we as citizens should have a relationship with you, oh God, that we can draw from your kingdom. I remember the story of the Shulamite woman father and her encounter with the prophet Elijah. First, when she revealed her heart to her husband of wanting to make things a little bit easier for the man of God to provide a, a room for him, bed somewhere that he can come in after a weary day's journey, rest his head, take the load off his feet. The man of God saw her heart, oh God, and desired to return the favor he asked, what could he do for her? The servant recognizing father that she was without child. And the man of God in compassion spoke a word, released a word over her that she would indeed bear a child, bear a son. And she did. But I recall the part of the story years later when the son died. Oh God. And this 
woman decided that she must find the man of God. She must run to the man of God because she believed she had seen that this man had keys to the kingdom. She knew if she found him, she would find the answer to her situation, the answer to what she had found herself in. Her son, her only son, lay dead. But she had faith because she had seen it at work. She had testified to it. But the testimony has died. And she wants to find the man of God because she believed that he had keys to the kingdom of God. And Father, upon, upon finding him, she was rewarded with her faith not just her faith in the man of God that he had the keys, but the faith in the God that the man of God served. You worked a miracle through your servant. Thinking about us, oh God, as we come in your presence night after night, day after day, where things are raging outside, Father, like they are in Florida today, where Florida recorded its most death since this pandemic started. And yes, I heard many saying that, oh God, that when we come to talk to you, we shouldn't even mention COVID, but how can we not, Lord God, seeing that our very lives are, are um, not just interrupted by this, this pandemic, but it is as if it is being directed by this pandemic because we can no longer go and come as we please. Now we have to be careful and mindful of where we go and what we do, Father, in the very air that we breathe. But we know the answer to what we desire to know is in the kingdom, is in your kingdom, O oh God. And tonight we are asking you, Lord, as Paul said to the Corinthians, we are seeking, Father, the mysteries, the hidden mysteries of your kingdom. We desire to know. Yes, we understand, Father, that, that for you to, to unlock certain things before our eyes, to give us certain keys, Father, we must develop, oh God, a, a, a type of relationship with you such as the man of God had in the story I just mentioned. Where he was so close to your Father that you had no apprehension of releasing mysteries to him. And when he spoke, Father, you would willingly support his words because of his relationship with you. He actually spoke for you in the earth. And you would support him. Father, I would tonight that we here would cultivate such a relationship with you. A similar type relationship with you, oh God, that be so strong that the words are for our Lord and Savior as he said it while he walked in this earth that greater things than he did while he was here on earth, that we, being a part of the kingdom, will be able to do. That we're still, we still should be 
expected to do great things through the name of Jesus Christ. We ask that through the power of the Holy Ghost tonight, God, lead us to that place, Father, in you. Take us there. I remember the, the story of Jesus taking a few of the disciples on the mountain, oh God, and, and the revelation they got that night. As they saw some of the, the old patriots, the heavens opened before their eyes. They got a glimpse of your kingdom. So great was the, the feeling of it that, that Peter was compelled to speak again. Let us stay here. It was so, so wonderful. So tremendous to him that he, he completely forgot about his brothers. Let us stay here and build tabernacles, Peter said. Just a small glimpse of your kingdom. Oh God, take us there. Help us to recognize that when we say that you are all powerful, that's what that means, all powerful. All victorious, all glorious. And this COVID thing shouldn't shake us the way it does, God. Because we should have such a firm, a firm foundation in you. That on Christ, we should be able to stand and declare a thing. Many are dying. We should be able to stand and declare a word. We should still be able to lay our hands on God and those who are dying, even those who are dead. And in the power of Jesus' name, see resurrection. Because after all, Father, if we are in you, we should be givers of life. The power that flows through you should be flowing through us. Lead us there, O oh God. Take us there. Show us tonight. Reveal yourself to us in such a way, Father. Take us to that place in you, O oh God that we will become one with you. I thank you tonight for your words. I bless you, God. I give you glory and honor. Your words are powerful. They are alive, God. No, many how, no matter how many times we read it, Father, they still have the power to blow our minds. We thank you. Thank you for the power of your word. We want to thank you for the power of your blood, Lord God, that cleanses us and made us whole. Now, Lord God, let the power of your spirit be more alive in us. Come alive in us, Jesus, through the power of the Holy Ghost. Help us to become more like you. It's our desire, Lord. We humbly ask tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Amen, Jesus. Anybody else who would like to, I would like us to pray at least for another 10 minutes or so. Anybody else? Um, Lord God, we do come 
thanking you and I come, O oh Lord, and will serve you. Because, O oh Lord God, we all get weak each and every day. There's always something that we try to do to avoid from standing your word. Like I was today, O oh Lord, trying to figure out a way, should I take a break or do this and that? But my wife was uh, persistent and consistent and asked me, are we going on and on? And you did not want to have any part of me missing your word. And I thank you for that, Lord. We give you honor and we give you praise because your word is so powerful. Your kingdom, as Brother Donovan was speaking of uh, his lesson tonight, he touched so many things that uh, this illuminated in me and your word. He mentioned about the uh, the male fighter about the Pharisees and the Sadducees always accusing the Lord of something. Yeah. And we know, Father God, that the word male fighter, and I know uh, was or not because of the time that women did not really create any type of offense. It was all males. But that's just my take. But I know the, the word itself, male fight or is an offense. And then it was stating to Pilate that if he was not a male fight or, in other words, if he had not committed a crime, a crime according to them, then we would not have brought him in front of you. And we know that word male phyto is a legal term. Anytime we see M-A-L-E, M-A-L, in front of a word, we know that there's some problem. Male practice, male this. For Lord God, we know that you can explain everything. Your word is our life. We also are discuss, oh Father God, about your kingdom. We know that John the Baptist say, Behold, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And what is the kingdom of heaven, Lord? Your word, your presence, your deity, your power your rule, your kingship, because it's all about you, Christ Jesus. And so often, Father God, we get the kingdom, your kingdom mixed up with the kingdom of God. And often people say, well, it's the same thing. It may be, but we know that Jesus is going to rule here on earth, the kingdom of heaven is going to be here on earth. And we say, and the words say, for a thousand years, he will rule. And after that, then everybody, everything will succumb under the leadership of God. Even Jesus will be submit unto him. And then it will be the kingdom of God. And Lord God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for our Brother Donovan and, and the lesson tonight that we continue to study to show our self-approval, Lord. <clears throat> that we will present ourselves as a living sacrifice. Reasonable and acceptable to you that we don't lose faith, Father, just because we are having all the uh, turmoils and different situations and the chaos 
because the chaos are here because of our disobedience. Just as you told did to the children of Israel, that because of their disobedience, you was going to allow their captain to take control over them. And because of our disobedience, you allowed all of this to happen. So we won't get and start pontificating as if we all this and all that. We know that we are nothing but a puff. We have no control over absolutely nothing. So we thank you, O oh Lord, that we have to depend on you, that we allow your spirit to pervade over our spirit, that we won't get complacent in that, that we will take heed to what's happening all around us, but keep our eyes on the prize. Keep our eyes on you. There's not going to be any, no peace until you come. There's going to be a lot of chaos from henceforth. But we, O oh Lord God, want you to give us, O oh Lord, the will and the zeal to be able to sustain what to come. That we will build a foundation. That we will plant our feet on solid ground. So whenever the storm comes, we won't get blown away. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, O Lord, for allowing the Holy Spirit to dwell in us and we in him. That we may listen silently to you speaking to us. That we may be obedient to your word. Doing what you charge us to do. To continue to love our neighbors as thyself. And love you with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind. And then you say, Lord God, you will hear from the Father. If we turn away from our wicked ways. Not the world, Lord God, but your people because the world don't hear us at all. They are not thinking about you. They don't know you, and they don't care about you, but your people. Oh, hear your voice. That we, O oh Lord, may come together as, as a unit, on one, on one accord, Father. That we would take heed from the children of Israel, and don't be like them, but be as you have taught us to be. Servants, not grudgingly, not complaining, not backbiting, not having animosity and hatred and envy, but peaceful and temperament and loving and caring and supporting one another. We thank you, O oh Lord, for this night. We thank you for all that is here on this line. We ask that you will continue to put a head of protection around all of us. Bless us in a special way, O oh Lord. That we, O oh Lord, as men, must stand up to the plate and continue to be the covering of our household, our wife, O oh Lord. And you are the covering for us. That we, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, may continue to stand up boldly and be courageous men. And that we, O oh Lord, may grow from children to become son and daughter of your kingdom. And we thank you and we praise you and we lift your name on high. In your son, Christ Jesus, name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Oh, I see we lost some people. Yes. Uh, thank you, Brother Henry. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God.
Any um any comments or anything before before we move on? I'm just checking to see what who said what here. Oh sorry, any 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 comments? Yes. Okay, are you gonna say something? Yeah, um Yes, uh, that's a, a good good one. Um, you know that kingdom, that world within a world. You know, that world, that king, that operation within an operation. Um, yeah, that's 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 something to really focus on and honing on and honing on. And um, we'll, we'll pick it up again tomorrow. Amen. Amen. I see somebody left something that I was trying to figure out to. Somebody left something in the chat room. Yes, it was Asanda. Asanda said she was getting kicked off. Her internet wasn't working so hot. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, I'm sorry. Last night I should have reminded folks that were on about... Um, Saturday night. Pastor Gray will be coming back on Saturday night. And um, he also has, like I, I mentioned it briefly last Saturday, that he does interpretation of dreams. And especially if you have one of those one, those dreams that are bothering you, might have been a little up from a while back, you know. Let's bring it up. Let, let, I hope you'll have the time to... Uh, to get into a little bit of that, you know? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I um, had a good uh, conversation with Brother Aaron today, and he was giving me some examples about him and uh, him and Sister Shanda put into practice that which we were taught on um, a Saturday night, you know? And this is working for him. I was like, you know, and Brother Henry, you and Sister Bella started practice anything they, they said they they sat down they prayed asked the lord to uh to clear their mind you know and he said that i thought about you there brother and all my, our hearts and minds are clear you know <laughs> ask the lord to clear their mind now fill it with uh with prophetic thoughts and they they said they had uh, some good experience you know you might have to try it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, mercy, mercy, mercy. But, um, Me and the wife, we um, we have made it a habit of reading that book uh, by Francis Roberts. Francis Roberts, Come Away, My Beloved. Mm. It is such a prophetic book that we try to read uh, a chapter at least a night mm -hmm. and try to apply that uh, to our everyday living because it keeps us focused on the word uh, and, and then it put ourselves in it what we are supposed to do and how we're supposed to go about doing it. So we, we, we practice that. Amen, amen, amen. Is, is that what you read from this morning on the call? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I thought, I, did, I, I didn't give you a book, right, Brother Donovan? Mm. Okay, I'm going to get you one. And you, you too, Brother Tao. All right. Listen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. It is so powerful. You, you, it's mm -hmm. like some good stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's almost like um, we know that the book of uh, Proverbs, you can just turn to any book in Proverbs and read it, and it'll be about you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Think about that. You just turn to any book in Proverbs, and it'll be about you. 
Hey. <laughs> when I did uh, when I did my talk, um, break break uh, break loose the fetters. That's from that book. From that book. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you'll love it, brother Donald. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You touch on some powerful things. We'll get to it later, like Brother Taylor said. But I marked some down, Brother, brother uh, Donovan, and we can go over those. Mm -hmm. It was, it was real good. Yeah, I, I was thinking today that for maybe for one of these Bible study nights, we should, uh, we should work, uh, work on the kingdom and uh, discuss. You know. Yeah. Dig into it a little bit. You know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, men's night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> she just, yeah. She, see, she she threw that in there because you you mentioned that word male. See. No. Oh. <laughs> I'm the only female here. I just feel like it's men's night. Yeah. Yeah, that word, matter of fact, is a legal term, Brother Donovan. You're aware of that. But no, uh, my wife here, or should she right here? But she, she locked in her schoolwork. But she right here. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, sister. Um, hey, sister Pat. What's up? Pa no, Pam. Pam. What's up, dude? <laughs> <laughs> my brother Teo. Hello, Sister Bella, Sister Bella, Sister Henry. All right. Yeah. Um, you know, Brother Taylor, I, I was thinking, I, I need to co get in touch with these folks tomorrow, because I haven't seen some folks all week. And I was wondering if, um, if they got the information correctly, because, you know, last week we were... Each day we were handing out a new um, link. And some folks might not have gotten the, the word that they don't need the same link each day. You know, because I haven't seen some folks, some of the folks I haven't seen them all week. I'm going to call them tomorrow and find out. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's the truth. Yeah. And um, I have to try to get them email too. You know what I mean? Mm. The email and um, phone number. You know, uh, and so if anything, we can shoot them an email. That All right. Be, you know? That would be, be good, yeah. Yeah, just, just keep abreast of things. Mm hmm All right. All right, I mean, anything else? Tomorrow night, we'll be brought to you night. Um, you, you were in here earlier, Brother Henry, but I... I went down to his house today, and I I, I couldn't wait till tomorrow because I know I ain't taking no chances with this cake thing. <laughs> I went there, <laughs> got my portion before he started celebrating. You know? <laughs> um, but tomorrow is his birthday. He he says he'll be here tomorrow night. <laughs> we, we, All right. We went, we went and seek his uh. So some of that cake that he gave me today had a little bit of spirit in it. So we, we see how well he overcome that <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's a seriously because after I finished earlier today, man, I had to go <laughs> take a nap. <laughs> I was wondering if Brother Donald would take a nap as he had the cake. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm telling you, man, you know, <laughs> I don't know, brother, and I don't think, um, yeah, here in America, you guys grew up doing this thing, but these, uh, these, these Caribbean people, you know, um, they, they, they find ways to, to hide, you know, hide the spirit, you know, <laughs> so, some of them, some of them pour that stuff in, in, in cooking, man, they, they, they pour that stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> You think you're drinking soup, you know what I mean? <laughs> you're drinking soup with a little additive in it, you know? 
<laughs> yeah, sir. So that's that's how it is in the, in the cake. And then I tell you, you know, my, my neighbor that, that that went home to be with the Lord, you know, God bless her soul. She she was one of those man. When she handed me a piece of cake. I would make sure it's near bedtime before I touch that thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> that spirit was strong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, Lord. God be praised, though. <laughs> all right, all right. Just see. Last night, Sister Daniel commended us for getting out before nine. Let's see if we can do it again. Okay. <laughs> All right, but I tell you, can you you dismiss us if we don't have any other if we don't have any other comments or anything? Will do. Yeah. Father God, we just thank you for another evening in your presence. Another evening of prayer. We thank you for, for it, Father God. We thank you for us being here. Lord God, we thank you for, for talking to us about your kingdom another time, Father God. Let us think and meditate upon your kingdom, your kingdom that is here, that kingdom that is to come, and your kingdom that is within us. There are so many components to it, Father. Father, I got to pray that you bless those who you didn't make it tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Just bless them, Father God, and, you know, continue to keep us together, Father God. Continue to work in our hearts, Lord. And let your name be glorified, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. I said, the, the little one wanted to pray too. Yeah. <laughs> be, <laughs> all right, family, tomorrow. Have a good night. Have a good night. God bless. In the morning, Brother Henry. In the morning. In the morning. All right. <laughs>